So right now we're at the drip blocks. We're planting cotton. This is part of Dr. Jordan Bell's race trials and irrigation treatment we have. Uh, one of the things with managing anything with drip is germination. So I've got a couple of seeds exposed. Uh, of course, this is cotton. The blue is the seed, obviously. What we're doing here is we're looking for planting depth as well as the spacing of the seed, just checking on the planter. But in doing this on the drip block, it, it reveals a couple of things that have to be considered with regards to water. So this area here, you can see that the moisture is much higher. This is closer to an emitter. Uh, this field did get a little bit of pre-water in preparation for planting, uh, knowing that we were not bringing any to the surface. So all the water applied is gonna be able to be used in the crop. But we wanna make sure that we've got enough volume of water to germinate since water's not coming from top to the bottom, it's gotta be stored in the soil. So things that we're observing is this wetting pattern. If you look at the emitter in this area, it's wet the soil suitably where this particular seed here could be germinated with no additional water. This one here uh, likely and this one here likely. But as you get a little bit farther to the periphery between emitters, this particular seed is almost dried in, uh, dusted in, a uh, little, little different uh, verbiage, but you can see that there's hardly enough water where we're not going to get a solid germination in these seeds. And if we go back to the other side of the emitter, tracking back, you can see here just outside of this wetting pattern, uh, again, we've got what would be a dry seed. And this cyclical uh, pattern is what's going to repeat down the rows. So what we'll do at this point is after this entire block is planted, this one will turn on and begin the actual irrigation. The idea be behind having enough moisture wetted out already is that in a timely fashion now, we can push that bulb far enough to capture all of these seeds so that we get an accurate germination. This is so crucial in cotton. You have to have uniform plant spacing so that the plants develop and grow properly, uh, but also so that they can accurately compete with each other so you don't get runaway vegetation, uh, so you don't get uh, disproportionate sizing. Uh, that way you can drive your yield and your, your, your uniformity. In, uh, in drip, this is paramount. On a pivot, it's a little different because you're gonna go over the top and it's gonna be simulating a rain where you're gonna get a, a uniform cover throughout. On drip, where you're working from the bottom up from point sources, you have to be able to fill that seed line consistently. And that's what we're looking at here. What we'll decide from this is how long we need to run this drip system to get an accurate germination. We're guessing probably in the range of an inch applied will fit our needs, but after we apply half to three quarters of an inch, we'll come back out and do this again, evaluate, see if we pushed water out to the seed row suitable enough for germination, and then we'll, we'll go from there. There's plenty of subsurface uh, soil moisture storage in this block, so we're not looking at applying a whole lot of water, but this timing of the early season irrigation for germination is paramount, and then we'll let the crop grow into the water that's there. Probably we'll spend a month to six weeks off of irrigating this plot once it's germinated, uh, then we'll come back in in June, and, and late June, early July, and, and figure out how we manage the rest of the season. Anyway, that's what we're looking at. Uh, drip irrigation on, on cotton around germination time. So a couple points to consider with seed spacing in general with planting, but specifically here on, on cotton. This particular cotton is on 30 inch rows, and then we are looking at a plant population of 65,000. And so our seed spacing down the row is gonna be a, a predetermined distance in order to meet, meet that population. So what we're doing is we're gonna come in and make sure that the planter is accurately planting with suitable and consistent spacing throughout to see that the inputs and the desired uh, population is being achieved at planting because we can't adjust that once the plant's germinated. Uh, the next step then is to make sure that this seed drop with spacing and rate is gonna then be propagated through the season so that we can get accurate germination to actually get that many plants per acre. Now in cotton, we're probably gonna have a 15 to 20% loss. That's just what the germination rate in the field ends up being. And that's gonna be random. Uh, if we can make sure that we irrigate it uniformly, that random distribution generally is a, a known fact. So we'll come with a seed drop. We're expecting that to be 65,000. We'll come back and check what our stand density is, which maybe say that's mid 50 thousands. Uh, and we'll be, we'll be happy with that. Uh, one of the reasons we want to look at these populations and the spacing is that if we have plants that are suitably close together, then they compete properly and so we can have better control of our water in this environment, especially because we're trying to control late season runaway. And the theory is as we drive these populations even way up, if we're looking at say 100,000 seeds per acre, if we drive it up that far, 
then these plants are going to be so condensed that if we get an unopportune rainfall event late in the season, that we will have some control where the cotton just doesn't return immediately to vegetative and stop producing bowls but turn back into growth. Our goal here is to keep this cotton, if you can see my hand, about this high, like between knee and thigh high in big high yielding cotton, maybe as low as knee high in places where water is really limited, uh, just to make sure that we are transitioning energy that we're extracting from the soil, transitioning through the plant, that it's got a very high rate of conversion from vegetative to reproductive since in a cotton plant we're harvesting the reproductive portion. So at planting it's such a crucial one-time event we have to get the seed spacing right we have to set ourselves up to have a very accurate germination because we feel that the population and the plant density throughout the season is such a vital role in how we control and manage water and manage the cotton crop for yield. Uh, a point on that is in these water limited environments and maybe this is the same for non-water limited environments your primary growth regulator is your irrigation it is the water and so if you can accurately time and apply water to be in your best benefit you can truly control and manipulate the way the crop responds to the available heat units uh, one of the things we're trying to prevent like i mentioned is that late season runaway if we know that we can get a response out of cotton with a quarter of an inch application on drip or a quarter of an inch over a week or a very small application, if a one or two inch rainfall comes, um, that can upset the entire program. And so the plant population is one of those tools that we have in the bag to allow that to be uh, diffused essentially. So we don't end up with a lot of space for the cotton to grow wild uh, because we've got too much spacing or some random spacing in the field. So this, this uniformity of spacing, uniformity of plant density is just absolutely crucial for our, our cultural management of, of cotton in the high plains.